There's something that's causing this problem, not just fix the problem. You're going and trying to fill a problem that is being caused from something else. What is the craziest thing that people are doing with their skin? Cleaning supplies on their skin. What? What? What do you do when someone comes in with an overfilled face and they're young? What are some plastic surgery things that you're seeing celebrities do that people just don't know about? If it was my money and my face, I would never do it. No one's ever said that like this on the podcast. Go off Right? On it is insane. That is why we have you on the Skinny Confidential him and her show. It is so crazy. I am reading this book about residency for doctors and dermatologists. It is so crazy. I I will tell you, residency is not like Grey's Anatomy. (laughs) Oh, it's not. (laughs) It's not as crazy as that. I would say like the hours and everything is pretty bad. Dermatology, I'll put to the side. You work really hard to get into dermatology and then your residency is actually not as bad as like surgery residency. Okay. So the one I was reading about, shout out to John Lawrence playing doctor was all about surgery residency with doctors. Yeah. It is insane. Dermatology is different though. How did you even get into that? Why did you want to become a dermatologist? When I first got into medical school, I wanted to be a family doctor, actually. I Which was gonna... is crazy. You got to talk about how you got you got into <laughs> medical school right out of high school. Yeah. <laughs> you got to talk about that. You got to talk so, about that. So there's like very few programs that are like six-year programs that you actually combine your undergrad and medical school to get together out of high school. So I had family friends who went through it. I was like, I, in, initially, I was like, let me do the traditional four years, four years. I know I want to be a doctor. My dad's a doctor. I know the life. So I was very comfortable with medicine. And then I was like, let me try the six-year program. I got in 17, went to Kansas City, did my undergrad in two years. So you basically just like, they load you up on credits and no summers, basically. So you just do a bunch of school, get in, and then start seeing patients like at 19. (laughs) So that was the wild part. And why skin? So for me, skin, when I, when I actually got into medical school, skin just made so much sense. One, there, you see the problem. You know, someone walks into my office. I'm like, I know why you're here. There's either something growing on your skin. You have a big rash. And I could fix it pretty quickly and see an immediate result or a very quick result, which was very nice as a doctor. Many, doc, many, many people don't want to go see your doctor. You know, a lot of people want to go see the dermatologist, which is nice. And then the last thing is, Um, you know, it's a very like fast paced field. I'm able to walk into a room, either I'm doing a procedure, I'm doing a laser, I'm cutting something out. I'm talking to someone about their skincare routine. So every patient's really different. I get to do procedures fast paced. So, and you walked in and I said, who has better skin, me or Michael? And you didn't answer, but you said, well, Michael has some redness. So what does that mean? Is that, <laughs> are you just giving yourself a compliment now? <laughs> kind of. Uh, I really work at my skin. So does Michael. Well, I'm 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 learning because I get to talk to people like yourself and come on the show. And I like you know you should have seen me before I started this podcast. It was a, it was a sore sight. No, you look good. But I want to know what he would do for redness around the nose. Because anyone who's listening who has redness or rosacea or broken capillaries. What would you do about that giant growth on Lauren's eyelid? <laughs> There's no growth on There's my no eye. growth. Go no. watch YouTube. What <laughs> would you I'm trying do? trying to get a, something for myself here. So redness around the nose is really common. It's a lot of the times it's from rosacea, you know, so that's an inflammatory condition. It's genetic. It's environmental. And you get these like broken, basically capillaries or blood vessels around the nose. I've had those forever. So, you know, if you have access to a dermatologist, go get a laser. It's the fastest way to get rid of them. There is multiple types of lasers, uh, light-based devices like IPL, KTP laser, which is just a more, you know, targeted to the blood vessel, and then PDL, which is like the gold standard for red spots on the face. Um, And that actually will like almost instantly remove the red spot, which is really satisfying for a patient when they walk in and then leave when it's gone. But in terms of skincare, I would say the best thing for redness is the same ingredient that's an afro-nasal spray. <laughs> so That's interesting. I never heard that. So if I'm telling people to be on a budget, 
because the prescription version of it is very expensive. Okay. I tell them to basically go get Afrin nasal spray, spray a couple pumps into their moisturizer and put it on their face. And it usually compresses all their blood vessels and gets rid of the redness temporarily. Chris, that is why <laughs> we have you on the Skinny Confidential, him and her show. That is a really good tip. What yeah. is the actual ingredient that does that? Oxymetolazine. Oxymetolazine. Yeah, so, long. so you just take a couple squirts, couple squirts of the Afrin, put it in your moisturizer and rub it around your nose. How many times do you have to do it? Well, it depends on what type of lifestyle you have. You know, if you're really like an, a night owl and you're going out at night, I would say do it before you go out at night. But if you're like, nine to five working, I would say do it in the morning. And if you're at home, you don't need to put it on. What if you go to bed at 730 and you read your Kindle for fun? In the morning. <laughs> do it in the morning. And That's you probably a have a tip. very healthy lifestyle if you're doing we that. We used to be so. going to bed at 7 a.m. Now we're going to bed at 7 p.m. Kids kind of... Kids turn that off. Kinda, I need to get on that routine. <laughs> no, your skin looks so glowy. Is there a specific thing that you do for your skin? If someone's listening and they have a boyfriend or a husband, like what are the things that you would start that person on? And how has your skincare evolved over time as a man? The first thing I would do is tell them to read your book you oh. know? <laughs> and put your sunscreen on. That's the first thing. I think everybody wants to get the the ingredient, the first thing is like, oh, let me get a new active ingredient. I'm like, if you're not going to protect yourself from the sun, you're just wasting your money. Like we all know this, like sun protection is the number one thing. It prevents from fine lines and wrinkles, dark spots, all these things. So you could keep trying to build collagen, but you'll never build it faster than the sun takes it away. I always tell people that. So first thing's protection and then add in some active ingredients couple of my favorites, obviously, retinol is probably number one. Um, helps boost collagen, helps with acne, helps with fine lines and wrinkles, dark spots. So it does a lot. And it's a pretty easy ingredient, I think, to add in, especially for, I would say, for guys more than girls, because they could just, they have usually more oily skin, so they could tolerate the dryness and irritation from it. Also, I feel like guys' skin is like thicker and so it can handle it better than women's. Like yeah. I noticed there's sort of like this waxy sheen on women who have used retinol for a long time. And while the skin does look clear and beautiful and glowy, there's a waxiness to it if you overuse it on women specifically. But is that actually true? Like I get more, maybe you can't fully answer that, but in your practice, do you typically see men with thicker skin than women? Usually their skin's a little bit thicker. Why is that? Do you, do it's, you... Well, I mean, really it, where the facial hair is, you know, you have a lot more sebaceous kind of oils where you're having hair growth. Mm -hmm. So that's in, especially around the nose too, I would say. Like, for example, for rosacea, more men will get enlargement of their nose from rosacea than a female would. because of And it's like that oil enlargement or rhinophimas. So it makes your nose bigger if you have redness around it. You better buckle in. A few years, I'm going to be looking like a clown. <laughs> not only, not always just the redness, but chronic inflammation with rosacea can lead to it. When I explain it to a patient, I'm like, look at what Santa Claus looks like. <laughs> you know, like the big boggy nose. He's like a red. Bulbous? Bulbous. Bulbous. You're going to get some bulbous <laughs> nose as you age and your ears grow it's a good and thing. your balls hang <laughs> and your dick shrinks. Oh, geez. What? I can't dick wait. Shrinks? Those are the four things I get. Well, it's a good thing that you're not with me for my looks, right? <laughs> I only stick with the skin stuff. <laughs> so, no, he's good. You he's have good. him to take. You can take care of him. He's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, on you know, it's I people ask all the time, like, we talk about testosterone on this show and I'm like, listen, not yet, but probably when I'm like in the late fifties, hopefully I make it that far sixties, I'm going to jack myself up on that testosterone and I'll be, I'll be good. Don't worry. Don't do too much. You know, but yeah. you gotta, but I think there's a point where older men, it yeah. makes sense. Not now it's too early. Yeah. You want to get it to a high normal. Yeah yeah. 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 What is the craziest thing that you've seen on TikTok that people are doing with their skin where it makes you want to just cringe? Every, I think everything is so bad. Like, give us some examples. Okay. One is just like using cleaning supplies on their skin. What? Yeah. Like what kind? What? Like I've seen people use like baking powder oh. and mixing it with like, like honestly, like the detergent stuff that you would like clean a table with to like remove the bacteria off your skin. I'm like, that's just in general, right? Like th I've seen those videos. 
that's always bad. And then it gets to like people wanting like a reaction on their face. So they'll put something really basic and then really acidic and then be like, oh, it's fizzing on my face. Something's working. Ah. And I'm like, nothing's, you just neutralized whatever. <laughs> like that's what you did. Good job, you know? Um, and a lot of times it's ingredients that, for example, lemons are huge. I don't know why everyone wants to put a lemon on their face or in their hair or something, you know? But many times they'll do that to fade, especially dark spots. I feel like, and it's really used, I think, overseas. People love to use like more natural ingredients because they're scared of like the chemicals when everything has a chemical in it. But they'll put lemon and then they'll like rub rub it with like turmeric or something, which is anti-inflammatory. Turmeric's okay, but it will give you a nice orange tint to your skin. And then they'll go outside and then usually you'll get a photochemical reaction from the lemon, which will leave you with a big burn reaction that leaves you with a terrible dark spot. Oh my God, that happened to me with antibiotics. That's Doxycycline? A- Ugh, the worst. Do not... <laughs> Take doxycycline and go in the sun. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. We were saying with the lemon. Remember, I got that rash in Palm Boy, Springs. Boy, I ever. <laughs> <laughs> How could you forget it? Yeah. But that was bulbous nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was bulbous nose. But the photo, what's it called? A photo rash? Phototoxic reaction. Oh, yeah. It's uh, brutal. It is. And it lasts so long. It's really common vacationers because they'll drink margaritas at the pool and then like, there's lemon and lime in it and it gets on your hands and it usually drips because you're a little intoxicated. And then they'll come back from their trip and be like, I have this like streak of dark. And I'm like, were you having margaritas? And like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm a fortune teller. You know? <laughs> so what are other things that you see in your practice all the time that are so weird that people who are listening maybe are like, what is that? But you know, right away instead of margarita hand, margarita hand. Um, that's a TikTok, margarita hand. If you haven't done that, you guys, that's a TikTok. Margarita hand. Is it? Do you need to make a TikTok? Oh, I'll make a TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, one is I could tell when someone's using a heating pad for a long time. Mm. You get this kind of spider like rash that lasts for, it's usually really common in people's backs and they won't even notice it because they can't see their back. And it's like this, it's called Erythema ab igni. It's a really long name, but. From chronic heat exposure, you get this like spider-like rash. And they're like, oh, what is this? And I'm like, oh, do you have back pain? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, you use a heating pad? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, it's from that. So Michael Bostick is on the edge of his seat right now because he got the worst rash anyone's ever seen in history. I've never seen such a bad rash oh, in my shit, life. My phone's not here. Oh, I, see, I knew he was <laughs> in this rash. You have to show him this rash. Even Carson, if, my, phone's, my phone's in my uh, office on my desk. Well, you can use my phone. No, no, I need the picture. But anyways, while we're talking... No, no, no. This was like... I bet um, you he knows what that rash is. This is like... I shared this years and years ago and it used to be on my Instagram. And we still talk about it to this day. Well, it's going to be a while. We can maybe jump back to this because Carson's going to to check my phone. But it was like a full body. I I was like, you know, have you ever seen the movie Braveheart and the leper that lives in, you know, the old man, he lives in the attic. I was (laughs) like, that was was me for like two months. Two and months? I don't know if I ate something bad, but I had to go to like the hospital about because he of was it. itching his back on the carpet because it hurt so bad. He had to itch. Like, I'm going to show you the picture when we started. It was the I'll, worst rash I've ever I had, seen. I took it off my Instagram a while ago because I was just sick of looking at it and I shared it a long I mean, time ago. I don't ago. know why you shared the rash on the Instagram. No one wants <laughs> to see it. People didn't that. really want to see it. No, but anyways, it while, we're, while we're talking, no. I never figured it out, but maybe you could figure it out. Well, he sounds like you sound like you're like really savvy with seeing something random and diagnosing it. It's a great party trick. Yeah. Except when someone's like, could you take a look at something downstairs? And I'm like, no, no, not here. I went to this restaurant. I won't put the restaurant on blast because I don't want to kill them. But they, uh, I had like these crazy shrimp tacos. That your wife insisted and then you the ate. But it lasted for two months. So well, not fully really- like that. That lasted like that for probably like a week and a half. But it took a while for that to go away completely. Like once the skin was discolored, it took a while. I thought I was done. I was like, well, this is it. Better start, you know, saying my goodbyes and farewells to it could be family a, and friends. Something called erythema multiforme. I've never, see, I've never heard that <laughs> so, one. Did it, it looks like it was like pretty dusky in the middle. Sure, sure, sure. Pretty dusky in the middle. Uh, see that? Yeah, wild. Who doesn't want to lose their breakfast? What is the thing that you just described? What is, what is so it called? Usually, that's like an auto-reactive condition that's either from a viral infection. It can, it's commonly with like a herpes outbreak. Oh, great. <laughs> 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 On the entire body? Like a cold sore. 
it's a calm no, down. No, you've never had a cold sore. Uh, no, okay. but it wasn't. That's what freaked me out. Is like they took me in and they were like asking what it is, and it was like they couldn't figure that out. Yeah. I've never seen him have a cold sore. Okay. No, it was. I, I'm telling That's you. Sometimes, I you mean, know, but when you say it was viral virus. or bacterial, I remember the day I went, I had these shrimp tacos, and I, they were like a little bit sketchy. And then someone was telling me like sometimes the sediment mm-hmm. that a shrimp can have if you don't clean it out properly from the bottom of the ocean or wherever it was, like the body may just freak the fuck out, being like, "What is this in the system?" It's just weird that you're it lasted that long. Yeah, because usually like food stuff, you'll have a rash and it'll maybe last a week. So that's that's interesting. That was a know. fun diagnosis on air. <laughs> Maybe I'm a mutant now. Why do you think that your TikTok blew up the way it did? You have 1.9 million followers. What are the the videos that you see go viral and why? If I had an answer to that, I think I had more than 1.9 million followers. I mean, that's a very impressive it, amount. It is. I I made I started TikTok during the pandemic, right? So like most people and I was making videos, one on like how to treat conditions that you could treat at home without seeing a dermatologist. Because most of my practice went to telehealth or virtual visits. And most people couldn't come see a dermatologist during that time. So I was like, go buy this at the store and see if it works in, in the meantime. So I started making those videos. Those did really well. And then I started myth busting. And that really did well. It caused a lot of controversy because there's a lot of people on TikTok who are like skincare experts without the degree and they'll post a lot of stuff on there that really doesn't have any science behind it. So you have to be a little careful because there's a lot of skincare experts without a degree that are very smart and they actually do the research. They talk about the things that actually make sense. They put the publication behind it. And then there's some who will tell them to put like baking soda and lemons on their skin. Um, so Skin uh, myth busting was a big one. And then I recently actually started doing like a couple of months ago. It's like, if you have this, use that. And that blew up. Like give, us, that, give us some of those. For example, it's like, if you have milia or those like white bumps around the eyes, like you should start using a retinol around your eye. Right. That's a good and, tip. And a, and a, I've never heard that. I've yeah. just heard pop it. So no, not so, pop it with your fingers, but like go with lance bl- it. Yeah. yeah. For, with a professional. With the, see, that's the thing people will uh, do it at with, home. <laughs> for, don't lance it yourself with a professional. Exactly. But go ahead. So tell me about the retinol. I didn't know that. So retinol speeds up your skin cycle turnover, right? So usually if you do that, it will treat a little bit of the milia you have. If they're small, if they're really big milia, you will have to get a lance. But the beauty of using a retinol is it will prevent further milia from popping up huh which is really helpful and then stopping like don't use like vaseline or aquaphor around the eyes it, what if what about if you have dark circles around the eyes <laughs> hence me um what do you what would you do he then? doesn't have any dark circles I'm a little really? bit, well no. yes, yesterday was a little rough and then we got two kids under three so the sleep's a little <laughs> okay. dicey but but yeah um dark circles are tough that's actually one i made if you have dark circles use this okay and the reason it's tough is there's so many causes of it right Lack of sleep, genetics, actual hollowness. Like if you have a hollowing underneath your skin, the only way to do that is to put some sort of a volume filler, right? Or something like that. Um, And then there is pigment. So most of the time, what I tell people that will target, I think three out of the four is I would use retinol, I would use vitamin C and I would use sunscreen. And then honestly, maybe like a caffeine or niacinamide because caffeine will help tighten any of the vessels. Niacinamide is going to help with skin texture, skin barrier, help with dark spots. Retinol does all of it. So like fine lines and wrinkles, dark spots, um, collagen boosting, because that's like super thin skin. So you want to kind of thicken it up too. And then vitamin C also just supports collagen and and fades dark spots. So can, can you overuse retinol for the I'm using some of it right now, but I'm like I was told only like maybe three nights a week. So in reality, you should use it every night. Okay. All the studies on retinol are like every night use. But we always tell people to start three times a week because if you overdo it, you'll get too irritated, then stop using it for like two weeks, and then you'll restart it. And the whole point of using retinol is like long term success, right? So like you're not going to see any benefit for a week, a month. You'll start seeing it like six weeks in, three months in. So the best is to just stay consistent. So if you could only tolerate it three times a week, 
That's perfect. So it's maybe like they're testing to see if three nights a week gives me yeah. some kind of reaction. Yeah. Okay. What if you have hyperpigmentation? I, that's what I struggle from. Melasma and hyperpigmentation. What are some things that you would say to try? So first thing is sun protection. Okay. Um, Cause if you don't, I mean, like I said, you can't outwork the sun really like the sun's always going to beat you and make more hyperpigmentation especially if and if, if you're prone to it um if you what are your hyperpigmentation from is it melasma or is it i think spots? it's a mixture it's a hybrid of being on birth control when i was younger mm -hmm. just know if you go on birth control and you go in the sun i don't know you probably could speak more eloquently on it like it, it there's something that happens where i got like a sun mustache everyone on tiktok's gonna be mad about that take <laughs> What do you mean? This they is, just, this I know them. I, I know the TikTok. How is now. everyone going to be mad about that? And then Watch, the everyone's clip, mad promise. about everything. You know what I realized? This is just like a little tangent. I've been trying to think of what the internet's like. And I'm like, you know what the internet's like? Did you guys ever play the game Operation? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Well, Chris is probably fucking good at this because he's, a, but the internet is like Operation, the game. How you deal with it, you have to go in with a very specific angle of your hand to get the kidney to pull it out without it beeping. The side. <laughs> yeah. No. Anything you say might trigger yeah. someone. Yeah. The, the internet's operation. It's 100%. That's a great analogy. Thank you. I think so, too. I thought of it while I was driving today, and I was like, that is like what it is. Okay. Hyperpigmentation, I think it's from birth control. I think that it is from maybe like sun exposure. I also think, and this is, I think an important thing to know is when you get a peel or a glycolic peel, you cannot even go in the sun for one second. And what I mean is like even walking from your car to get into your car after you get the peel, you have to be protected. And I think people don't realize that incidental sun exposure yeah. really can activate something if you have had a peel or a glycolic. 100%. You actually like you nailed it right there because one birth control definitely triggers melasma. So it's the hormones and the, the birth control that usually do it. So if you want to do not get melasma, do a non hormonal birth control. Um, but that mustache is like classic. <laughs> and everyone, everyone comes into my clinic and they're like, I have hair. And I'm like, there's no hair. There. This is it's dark. So melasma is that like, ill-define almost sheets of brown and it's like forehead cheeks around the mouth um that's due to hormones pregnancy is a big one um thyroid irregularities and then you can get it from medications but they're pretty rare medications so that's not a big one um that's a very 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 tough condition to treat like you could do all the treatments and get it perfect. And then you'll go out in the summer for one day and it will all come back. What I've realized you too like with to pick it, the difficult ones for yourself, huh? I love difficult everything. <laughs> well, uh, what I've realized about it is number one, if I spray tan, you think that that'll even it out, but it brings it out more on the face. So I don't spray tan my face anymore, hmm. which is weird. If, Cause if you think about it, the spray tan clings to yeah. the dark spots on the face. So I don't spray my face anymore. I never think of spray tan on the face looks good anyway. You don't I won't like lie. It. You don't like neither does my facialist either. Stacy does Stacy's like, ugh. Yeah. How could you spray tan your face? Yeah. I don't like the spray tan at all. Even you don't on the like body. The, no, he doesn't like the spray tan. No, because I don't like the smell. You do oh. aggressively check out my ass though when I get a spray tan. No, no, no. I mean, listen, like I <laughs> aggressively, I notice a huge difference. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean I'm not joking around about that. You do. Maybe, but I don't like the the so you smell. Like now all the spray tanners gonna be mad at me. Now another thing they're gonna be mad. But but you know, it's just like it's just like it's really strong, and then the sheets get everywhere, and then you touch my shirt, and it's all over the shirt. But you just gotta avoid them for like a day. Yeah, but that's you know what's point of that. <laughs> <laughs> let let it all settle in. Yeah. You know? I feel like you kind of do like the smell. You just don't know that that's the smell. Here's the thing: we should be like, hey, Michael, don't use this cleaning supply or don't burn this candle. And then she comes in with like a paint like a car paintbrush <laughs> and sprays her whole body. And I'm it's like, this is balance. bullshit. You know, like how can, how can you say don't like use the, you know, the cleaning supply and they then put a tent around her though, right? Yeah. But it's yeah. like, it's all over yeah. the house. Do you like a spray tan for the skin? Oh, I, I'm, 
approached spray tan. Because you like that we're out of the sun. Exactly. Bake will, it till you make it. Bake this it. Is, okay. Like I'm all about it. Bake it till you make it. Anything you will do to not get in the sun and get a tan, I'm happy about. But what about like um like if you just wanted like a a, a decent amount of like daily sunlight? Will you do it like will you do it at all if the U, like if the UV's light or will you just avoid the sun completely? Listen, I go out of the sun. Like you need to enjoy your life. There's yeah. a very like I think there is extremes in both worlds. Like I'm not the dermatologist who walks around with an umbrella outside. Like I just put my sunscreen on and I go and enjoy the sun. If I'm at the tropical place, I'm by the pool, I'm in the water, but I just protect my skin. And yeah, you're going to have like a natural kind of tan that your body will make as from protection. If I'm burning, I'm doing it completely wrong and that's not good. But I, I think there is a fine line because you need to enjoy your life. There's a lot of things outside that require you to be in the sun. Well, I mean, and listen here, you have like a nice dark complexion, right? It's like a nice color. For me, if I don't get a little sun, I'm going to look like this fucking table, right? You're going to look like a sheet of paper. You're not going to be, I'm going to be get translucent. with her for her spray I'll be translucent. <laughs> you want to, you'll be like, oh. Yeah, gonna... he's, he's saying though, it, it makes your skin like, it degenerates. Is that the right word? Yeah. <laughs> it like degenerates your skin. Like it, it takes the bouncy plump collagen out yeah. of your skin. You know what? I have this little thing I do. I think you're going to be proud of me. I downloaded, or my sister did it, shout out to Mimi, the UV, mm -hmm. but she put it on my home screen with my steps. The UV index. So every time I pick up my phone, on it is how many steps I've walked, my UV, and, and how hot it is outside. So what I do is I look at the UV when it's zero, mm -hmm. which is for us in Austin, it's in the morning around eight o'clock. And I'll walk my son when it's zero. I'll still wear a hat and yeah. driving gloves. I wear driving gloves. I the whole thing. But it's really nice to know that it's not super strong and it's right on my phone. That's actually genius. It's easy. I should do that. Chris is... Make Chris, sure I do that. <laughs> Chris has two TikToks to film. Margarita hand and put the UV. Michael's looking at his... Michael has the stocks. That's probably a little more stressful to look at. Yeah, yeah I don't want to look at the stocks. Mark, I look Mark at is up today, feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think the UV, like just to look at it, because sometimes it's like eight. Yeah, I mean, we're in California. It's like always high, I feel like. What are these pills that people are taking to get tan? The carotenoid. Uh, carotenoid. Carotenoid. Think what? about like a carrot. You make, so there's basically you just make yourself a little bit more orange looking from, uh, eating too much of it. Like you could have too much carrot juice and they get an orange tan. Interesting. From it. Which to be honest, like they've actually been doing studies on this that I was reading that people do think like that orange, if you do it the right amount, it can look attractive. They were like looking at the attractive scale compared to like a suntan. But I think it's like either you're going to have to take a lot of that supplement and it can be dangerous to some people. It's like, any like if it's vitamin A derived, that stores it's a fat soluble vitamin, so it stores in your fat. So I, I don't recommend it, to be honest. I think spray tanning is better. So it continues your spray tan. They, I'm gonna continue with my spray tan. They harvest that stuff from the Jersey Shore. The <laughs> no, just, 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 calm down, New Jersey. It's gonna be all right. As a dermatologist, I think that you are probably seeing filler fatigue. Hmm. A lot of people coming in with too much filler in their face. They went way too gnarly. They didn't sort of keep it classy. It's like we went way overboard. What do you do when someone comes in with an overfilled face and they're young? Usually my staff will tell me before I even walk in the room. It's pretty. What did they say? What's the staff say? They just go. <gasps> yeah. There's a code word There's for it? There's a code word. Yeah, I, yeah because I, I don't want to walk in surprised. Oh, it's that surprising. It's Sometimes. That... Oh. Because I think a lot of people are getting filler way too young. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's too young. And I have a, like, so I'm Armenian. So we have a lot of, I have a lot of, like, Middle Eastern patients too. And they go overseas and they'll get filler too. And it's much cheaper there. So they're more prone to getting a lot more done. I would say most of my patients, I'm actually talking to them out of getting filler than putting filler in or talking about dissolving some filler. Um, and I think they are aware of it too. They are like, they're like, it's a little much. I don't recognize myself anymore sometimes. Here's two 
I think that as you age, a lot of people will get a facelift. But if you keep filling your face and filling your face and filling your face, you're stretching the skin. And I think the dermis out, Mm -hmm. out, 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 or long, 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 whatever, wherever you place the filler. And then you go in and you get, if you get a facelift, then you're pulling the skin over the thing that you've stretched. So to me, filler doesn't really make sense a lot in the face because if you are going to go and get a facelift, it almost negates, like, I don't understand why you would do that. I, so it depends on where you put the filler, right? Right. So a lot of the times, like for the cheeks, it's on the bone, for the chin, it's on the bone, for the jawline, it's on the bone. Okay. And I think the big misconception is people think filler does dissolve like in six months. They're like, it only lasts six months. It doesn't. Like they've done studies, like they've done ultrasound that shows that fillers in there for many, many more years, especially under, under the eye filler that lasts years, I would say for people. Um, I know a lot of plastic surgeons who do facelifts and interestingly enough, they don't mind the filler as much as they don't like the like threads and stuff that people do. Um, and that's because there's like a lot of scar tissue that gets built in. So when they're cutting, it's like you're basically resuspending scar tissue rather than mm-hmm. healthy tissue. So the filler, I'm not too worried about. Um, especially if it's on bone. I feel like if you put a lot in the fat, the superficial fat and the dermis, then you can definitely stretch the skin. But I would say there's a lot of other worse procedures to do right before a facelift. And I've realized now that a lot of people don't even want to pay for the facelift. That's the thing. I think the prices of facelift has gone up so much that most of my older patients are like, I'd rather do more filler or more like some non-invasive procedure, a laser, RF microneedling, something like that, then go under the knife and spend like $40,000. I would rather, if I was older, I would rather do the opposite. I would rather save for a really great facelift than do a bunch of filler because I have this theory when you overfill the bottom of your face, it brings the eye down, which I think can be aging. Mm -hmm. So... I don't get why you would keep filling the bottom of your face over and over and over because you're bringing the eye down when as if you, I mean, maybe I should be a dermatologist in my other life, but Mm -hmm. you want to bring the eye up, right? Yeah, the cancel tilt. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so this was huge on TikTok. Did you do it? No. There's like a filter, the cancel tilt filter. No. So uh, you should have like a a neutral or positive vector to your can't, like the lateral part of your eye, the canthus should go up okay and that's like more that. more attractive okay and a lot of people are using this filter and it'd be like negative till they're like, dang it i'm like unattractive so you don't want your face to look this way oh great yeah. right perfect <laughs> you're good you're good trust how's me. my cantle tilt neutral or okay. a little up actually oh yeah you take good care of your skin don't look at me. I'm hideous. <laughs> <laughs> your no, cantle you're tilt's a little off. <laughs> is the cantle tilt where the temple is? It's right here, like this part. Right okay, here. so if but you, a lot if, of times when you fill the temple and fill like under the eye, you support it and it'll raise it up a little bit. Okay, but here's my other thing because we're just getting so detailed. I don't like under eye filler at all. I've never done it, but I don't like it because I don't like how it presses the eye up and makes the eye look smaller. That's my theory. These are my weird theories. I'm not saying my theories are right. I'm just saying like this is. I think under eye filler is overdone. Yeah. I think everyone thinks like a filler is going to fix it and it causes swelling. It can cause if it's done too superficially, it can cause a lot of that blue discoloration under the skin, yeah. which even makes their dark under eye circles worse. There is the when I tell people. Like when we're learning about under eye filler and how to do it on patients, you want to go for like a 70% improvement. Everyone tries to go for like 100%. Uh But if you don't have an under eye or tear trough, you look like a cat. Right. A minx. Yeah. Like you need a little bit of a hollow there. Like that's just a normal structure in a face. And I think people are trying to get rid of like even like the laugh lines. People are like, I want my laugh lines gone. And... (laughs) 
I'm like, if I get rid of your laugh lines, you're going to look like a monkey. I don't want my laugh lines gone. I, yeah, you look artificial. Also, look so it artificial. brings the eye down if you get rid of them. Again, this we're bring, eye down. we don't want to bring the eye, eye down. down. <laughs> we're bringing the eye I, up. I have a up. more um, basic question because Lauren's going to go like into a deep rabbit hole, which I'm... I know I have 20 more deep rabbit <laughs> um, hole questions. But for uh, we were talking to Steph Shep yesterday on the show and she was talking to like one of her biggest skincare tips is she, she says she has a great derm. And she was basically saying that people should go and find a great derm like yourself. But if you are somebody, like say that I'm coming in um, and I get to learn a lot on this show, so I, I get access to people like you. But if I was going to ask for my first consultation, like the first four things or first three things that you know you should ask for your for your skin, like what would those things be for anyone that's like just starting their journey and just meeting a dermatologist? That's a great question. I would say first four things. When I'm looking at someone's skin, it's skin quality, then texture, then hollowness right like if you're coming this is for like cosmetics right so and those are probably the top three and when i look at someone i go what's your skincare routine basics right are you on the things that need to improve your skin are you on a sunscreen are you on a moisturizer vitamin c retinol those are the number one right and then i go what is the number one complaint you have so for you it'd be my redness right i'd say all right, let's fix the redness and the texture. It'd be, let's do some sort of, either get you on a good skincare cream that will help fade the redness, or let's do a procedure or a laser or light device that will improve your skin texture, inc- improve the discoloration, improve the redness. If you improve your discoloration and redness on someone's face, they could literally look the same. The hollowness could be the same. Everything looks the same. Someone will look at that person and be like, you look night and day different. You should go to Chris and get the laser, he's saying. No, I will. Yeah, come yeah. to LA. We'll, yeah, we'll you should fun. go and get the laser. That's, I mean, that's a quick one, right? Yeah. Super fast. But what I like about what you're saying, and we could keep going, is that, you know, it is so individual for each person. Yeah. And, you know, you know, there's some things that we will recommend on this show that I think are like blanket recommendations, right? Like, one of those is I think everybody, man, woman should weight lift. I mean, we don't have to go on that tangent, yeah. but I'll say that confidently. I think that is a good application for everybody. It doesn't have to be the main thing, but yeah. but with stuff like this, I'm a little bit more careful because I think what would work for me may not work for Lauren and what might work for Lauren may not work for me. Does that make sense? 100%. And I think a lot of the times, for example, when you were coming in, as a, I think patients come in with one complaint and it's, uh, it's an end result of another problem mm-hmm. rather than that's the problem. What do you mean? For example, if you do have like really deep lines here and they're like, I want to fix this. I'm like, actually, you're falling from here. We need to support here. And then we need to support your, we need to support your bone rather than your skin. Yes. No one's ever said that like this on the podcast. Go off. Right. On that. Yes. So like you can't, and imagine someone's like they listening. Go right to the effects, show, but- he he was saying that he, the cheekbones is actually where you need to be filled, not the the folds. I rarely ever fill the folds, and I'm telling you, like 95 percent of the time, my patient leaves and like my fold looks so much better. I'm like, I didn't touch your fold because you, if you look in an aging face, it folds inwards, and like your bone retrudes back to your facial bone, so it comes backwards, and your skin falls down, so it almost like collapses in on itself. Can't wait. Thanks, Chris. Keep no, but going. it's like... No, no, hold on. <laughs> Look forward to aging. <laughs> so what you want to do is really support the bony structures, the deep structures on the cheek where you're lifting up here. And when everyone suddenly like, oh, you lift up the skin with a cheek filler, you know, it's not dramatic, right? You're not like, oh my God, I just put... Your, you have a whole new face. But like millimeters count on the face. Millimeters count on the face. Like if you raise your eyebrow three millimeters... And don't tell anyone. People are going to be like, what's wrong with your eyebrow? Right? So that matters. So first you want to inject on the bone here. And then you really want to go. There's a deep piriform space. It's like this hole right next to your nose. And a lot of people don't realize that. Like you have actually a great example of what it isn't. So if you look at like your line, your nose is actually really like almost like doesn't dive into your nose at all. Your nose and your line are almost together. Is that good? That's great. Because a lot of people will have this deep like crevice right by their nose and their line, their laugh line dives into that crevice. So do you because fill of that hole. the hole? You fill the hole. So you put a, a lot of filler right on the bone right here and it plumps that back out. 
And then you still have this line, but it ends like naturally with your nose and people are like, wow, my laugh lines look so much better. It's kind of like building the foundation of a house. It really is. It's like, it's not, you're right. It's not just like, what is the symptom coming from of why you do that? Well, no, but I think like part of the problem of the world we live in now is you, is people jump right to effect. And what I mean by that is they will see something online or they'll see a picture of their face or they'll see someone else. And instead of going to the root cause of whatever's causing that particular issue, they'll jump right to the effect and they'll they'll try to fix the what's on the surface and they won't go to the root of what the problem is. So I'll give you like a strange, stupid example. Like there's a lot of people that complain about back pain, mm-hmm. especially young adults, which you should not have back pain if you're a young adult. The reason you probably have back pain is because you're sedentary and you all you probably have no hamstring strength. So people think like, I need to go and fix my back. It's like, no, you need to go build muscle in your hamstrings to build proper posture. Does that make sense? 100%. And so then they go and they start doing all this stuff on their back when that's not, has nothing to do with their back. It has to do with their leg strength, their hamstrings. Yeah. And and the same thing here. It's like you're going and trying to fill a problem that is being caused from something else. Yeah. You have to work your way back. It's always work your way Mm -hmm. back. Like there's always, there's something that's causing this problem, not just fix the problem. But I think that's where like we're getting in trouble now. And I, I mean, I think social media, I, I'm probably fault of this myself when I make videos. I'm like, if you have this, use that. People think it's going to go away the next day. Right. Which is, I try not to do that. And I try to make videos in, the, in between all these things like skincare takes time. Procedures, like if I'm doing a laser to remove rounds off people's skin and that takes two weeks, you cannot expect your cream to treat something in a, two days. Right. I think that where it's sort of like that quote about like, show me your routine and I'll show you your life. Like the little habits that you do every single day, whatever that is, whether it's wellness or beauty or whatever, really do add up if you do them every day. I've found that with all the things that I've tried, like sort of like as a beauty guinea pig, that the skincare routine of doing it every single day and showing up for myself every single day is what really over time is the most effective. Mm-hmm. I love IPL. You said you like that too. I did IPL for brown spots and I felt like that really worked. It's amazing. Yeah. And I think it's a great entry level um, procedure that's not going to break the bank for a lot of people. Um, and it does so much. Yeah. It treats browns, it treats reds, it treats, it can stimulate collagen. So it's one of those. But you have to be the right skin type, right? You can't be like really dark skin because then you'll get burns. And there's bad videos. If anyone wants to like see what the downside of an IPL is, type in like IPL burns. And you'll see people with like skin type six or like really, really dark skin. And they just get burned from the IPL because it's so much heat and it targets dark. And everyone has different skin types. It's like we're not all the same. You can't just prescribe one thing fits all. Yeah. What do you, you said you don't like threads. I do not like threads either. I've never tried them, but I've interviewed a lot of people who hate them. Are you like so passionate that you hate them? I tell people if it was my money and my face, I would never do it. Yeah. And the reason for that is I really, I've seen people do threads. I've had family members do threads. And I tell them don't do threads and they just don't listen to me, which hurts my feelings. So listen to me. Uh, but, um, you, you're really causing a lot of s- scar tissue. And the result is, oh, I'm building collagen by creating inflammation in the skin from putting in this thread. But you could do that with microneedling PRP. Or with sculpture. There's so many other things, right. right? Right. You could do. And then they're like, oh, and they'll leave the appointments like crazy lifted. Like they I'll look like the that. Joker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like it's like it's a little scary, and I'm like, <laughs> he's seen it all, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then it falls in like six months, and it's like back to square one. And it's a big fall, you would think. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're trying to like. They always do these videos where they like they'll pull on the skin, and Ugh. they'll be like, "Wow, I'm pulling up on the skin so much." And yes, temporarily, you're going to have a lifting effect. You will build some collagen, however. I've seen many cases of threads being put in way too superficially. Some people try to do the eyebrow lift with threads. If you like, there's great videos also on social media for this, but they put the thread in too superficially. You literally see the thread on someone's that's like going up their forehead and you just see like this barb. Oh. And the only way to do, take care of that is to cut it 
cut the skin, obviously give you a scar now, and then pull out the thread. And if they're barbed, they're like really like stuck into the skin. So what are some plastic surgery things that you're seeing celebrities do that like people just don't know about that you think are like so crazy that like maybe we would never think of? Or maybe there's none and we know them all now. Maybe think, we, we you put know, the puzzle I, together. I really think that a lot of people are posting more about procedures than they ever have. Thank God, because who I, cares? Yeah, and I think it's it's almost a flex. Like, oh, I got this done. I yeah. did that. It's like the new car that you got, but not. But not. Yeah. That's with me. When I get a new laser, I'm like, look at my new laser. It's like, <laughs> you know what else people do that with? We were laughing yesterday is they do it with like cold plunge saunas. They'll be like, well, look at my cold plunge. Oh, you do that. You are one of those I people. Do. I think it's cool <laughs> to have a cold plunge. Like, I don't care about is the it car. It, a cold plunge? You would love I it. I feel like you would love it. Well, it's so like it has to do with I skin. Can't, listen. You put me in a cold shower for like two seconds. I'm jumping out of there. So no, no, no. I feel you like you'd like, like it. it just because I could tell like you're you're a go getter. Like it, you'll just get you get so much energy. We don't have to go on a tangent. We talked about. I brought like, you I feel an like ice roller. Like you can start out with this. I needed this earlier. I want to know if you like ice. If you like how you use ice as a dermatologist. Okay. Is there any way that like you like it after Botox? I mean, you obviously don't want to roll over Botox, but like, yeah. uh, how do you use ice as a dermatologist? It's great for like, uh, like while you're doing filler. You put yeah. ice on the areas to help prevent bruising. Yeah. I love it for mornings. I I think ice, there's a difference. Like people like get an ice bath and like shove their face in there for like five seconds and then come out. I'm like, that's not really doing much. But having ice in the actual massaging motion of it is really good because many, like it's like gua sha. Like that was a huge thing, right? Gua sha is not going to give you a jawline. However, temporarily, it's going to reduce a lot of inflammation. It's going to drain your lymphatics. It's going to tighten up some of the skin. And this is amazing for the under eyes. A lot of like the, uh, there's actually an uh, an eye serum by L'Oreal that I like a lot. It's the HAI one. It has like these steel balls on it. And you could literally massage your under eye with it. So that's what I do. And it has niacinamide and all these other things in it. But ice or cooling sensation and actually mechanically aiding in lymphatic drainage, you're going to look tighter. Your skin is going to look a little better. So, what is a drugstore product that you think is so incredible for the skin? Like, if someone could go find something and walk in and grab something, what would it be? So many. <laughs> There's so many good ones. Um, it, de- it really depends. Like, this goes back to what you're treating, right? Like, it's, r- it's really easy to spend a lot of money at a drugstore buying things that really. One, they're not going to help your skin. But for example, like if you have dark spots, right? The way I tell people to use dark spot to treat dark spots is you need to hit it from multiple angles. Okay. So one, protection, sunscreen, right? Anything SPF 30 or higher, broad spectrum, make sure you're wearing it every two hours. So like this one's perfect, it's SPF 50. And this one's really good. The reason I like this one is it's actually a chemical sunscreen. I don't know what your thoughts are on chemical versus mineral sunscreens, but for darker skin patients who are the ones who really struggle with dark spots, especially PIH or post-inflammatory dark spots from acne and stuff because they already have melanin, you need a sunscreen that's going to blend into their skin or they'll never use it. So if you use like that really, you know, old school white casty sunscreen, like they'll never put it on, right? So you need something chemical. I think it just blends in really well. And then in the morning, vitamin C, at night, niacinamide, or at night, niacinamide and retinol. Okay. Right. So you'd use this one at night, this niacinamide, the dark spot serum. Yeah. That oh. one you could use actually twice a day. There's a big, like, the reason you could use this one with vitamin C, and there's like a lot of controversy on social media of like, can you use niacinamide with vitamin C? You can. You got to be careful because there's a lot of niacinamides on the market that are really high percentages. They're like 20% niacinamide. And with, you know, like any high percentage, anything, you can cause irritation to the skin. So what, this L'Oreal one's 12%. So yeah, this so is 7%. I want to tell them the, the exact one that you can get at the drugstore. Yeah. It's L'Oreal Paris Bright Reveal 12% niacinamide, and it has ferulic in it. Ferulic, so it's antioxidant and amino sulfonic acid, which is actually an exfoliant. And then you use it with Bright Reveal 50, SPS 50. You like SPF 50. 
Most people don't use enough sunscreen. Okay. So I tell them, if you have dark spots, you should use SPF 50. And would you bring the UV sunscreen onto your hands and your chest? hundred percent. Yeah. You know that. I mean, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that. I yeah. scream it from the rooftops. Take it to your tits. Take it to your toes. My facialist <laughs> tells, tells me, like <laughs> Stacy Christie, she says, your skin, Lauren, is from your forehead to your toes. Yeah. And she looks fucking incredible. You, there are so many videos of people like old farmers. Have you seen these? Yeah. With and the then skin like, on their hands. And then their thigh. Than, yeah. It is ridiculous. Like if you, and this is the thing, like sunscreen's not sexy. I tell people this all the time. I'm like, sunscreen's not sexy, but it's like the best thing for you. Because you'll never be like, oh my God, my sunscreen is doing so much for my skin. But like in 10 years, when you see someone else who's not wearing sunscreen, you'll be like, my sunscreen did so much for my skin, right? Um, but yes, hands, neck. And the neck is super hard to treat too. By the way, like down the line, when you're using all these laser and light devices, it's harder to treat than your face because it's thinner skin. This is why if you're already at your facialist, I'm like, just have her do it. Then I have my facialist do my arms. I've had my arms microneedled. Like if I'm already there and I can slap on an extra, listen, I know that like some people like they're saving money, so that's not cost effective. Yeah. But my point is, is if you're doing your skincare on your face and you have extra, put it on your arms, yeah. put it on your hands, like use it where you can use it. Don't just wash it off. I do nice cinnamon on my hands. I do yep. vitamin C on my hands. I do retinol on my hands. Actually, any of my actives that I use in my skincare routine that build collagen, improve your skin barrier, help with dark spots, goes on my neck, goes on my hands. And it's game changer, I think. I got a different curveball question for you because I know we're getting close on time. For Obviously, you have a skincare routine and I now have a skincare routine, but a lot of men are resistant. Even like friends of mine now they're like, you know, they're looking like old One dusty. One of his crust bucket friends brought no moisturizer or sunscreen on a trip that we were on for two weeks. And I go, what's going on with your skin? He goes, I forgot a moisturizer. I'm like, you need some of my colostrum serum right now. I dragged Whoa. him downstairs. This is not okay. You can't just go away for two weeks and be like. Can we talk about crust bucket? <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> That that is a that well. Is a, a lot of these guys, a lot of my guy friends now are coming to me, and they're like, you know, they've seen a yeah. drastic change, right? And they look like old weathered saddles. And it's still, even with that, it's hard to convince men to do a skincare. Do they think it's like maybe they think it's feminine, or they think it's like weird to have a routine? But the more people I've talked to, and the more I've learned about skin, I'm like you know, you lead with your face. You want to have healthy looking skin. You don't want to look sickly, right? You sound like I robotically went in your uh, body and made you say that you no, lead no, no, with but, your face. But anyways, it's it's taken Those a lot so of drumming into me. And again, I have these conversations, yeah. but for men that come, like what is the easiest way in your opinion to get men to develop a skincare routine and think about taking care of their skin? It's with men. I love using combination products. I'll be honest. Like Get a sunscreen with that's moisturizer sunscreen combo. But I mean, what do you tell them to this get is, them? No, he's saying like multitask, like how yeah. this has niacinamide sure, sure. No, but, and the but, vitamin but C. They can but just I mean, use that. What do you tell them when they're resistant to even wanting to implement it? Because again, like I said, a lot of men, for whatever reason, they feel like uncomfortable having a skincare routine. Well, first I find out why they're uncomfortable with it, right? Like a lot of people, if, if it's like image wise, they're like, I don't want to like look like I'm doing makeup and stuff. They think it's like not manly. Exactly. Yeah. So then I'm like, your skin's dry, right? Yeah. And most of the, most of the guys are the ones with beards. You're a crust bucket. And I don't say that, but <laughs> I might start using it. But most of the time I look at someone's beard. This is what always gets them. I'm like, I look at their beard. I'm like, oh, you're like really flaking in your beard. Yep. I was just And then they get so like, so, it yeah. sounds so bad, but they get like more self-conscious about that. And I'm like, you know, you should really moisture. Your skin's really dry. You should moisturize it. And then I'm like, you should just use this one as sunscreen, knock out two steps in one. You don't need dead skin if coming I out of your beard. If I was a dermatologist and I saw a guy in my office that was resistant, I would do exact. I would be like, you know, you're a little crusty. <laughs> just to call someone crusty and like, it's done. No one wants to be crusty. Little... Crusty the clown. No one wants to be crusty. Just be like, you're, you know, there's a, the flake thing is great. A little flaky, a little crusty. There's a little crust hanging off your eyebrow that would go away with moisturizer. Done. It's done. That's all you so can do. So that's one way. And the other <laughs> way is my the scare tactic where like I have uh, authorization from some patients that have had really big skin cancers removed off their face. Oh, God. And I'll literally show them like a face filleted open. And I'll be like, you could have that if you don't wear sunscreen. And they're like, oh, I'll, I'll buy one right now. And I'm like. Carson is logging on to L'Oreal to buy the Bright Reveal 
SPF 50 right now. I'm going to leave the link for the product that you recommended and your TikTok in the show notes. So you guys can just go shop. Some, maybe you can like send us some of your tips. We'll put them in the show notes. The passive multitasking products that you recommended. I think it's so smart yeah. to find products, like you said, that have multiple ingredients so people don't get overwhelmed. Where can everyone find you? Pimp yourself out if they want to book with you virtually or in person. Uh, social, uh, Dr. Tomasian on Instagram and TikTok. My clinic is the Dermatology Collective. Um, I'm in Glendora, California. I do virtual appointments. I do in person. And um, you could find, you could do those appointments at the dermatology collective.com or just link in my bio on Instagram. And your TikTok is off the charts. If you guys want to go watch some super interesting myth busters, ingredient information, I think it's really cool what you've built. I appreciate it. We'll Thank link you. it all out. Thank Thanks, you for man. Thanks for making the trip. Thank you. Appreciate you.